So I'm going to now uh, talk a little bit about my project for the biennial. Um, all the works are related to my interest in energy as a substance in motion, but also to the questions of collective intelligence in both nature and culture, and uh, constant movement and evolution of things. So uh, one of the things that we that discussed with Tobias um, very often is our shared interest, interest in how for anthropology, the subject of knowledge should not be anything fixed, but it should be a constantly evolving, mutating subject. So um, so everything here, in one way or another, is in motion, in perpetual evolution and, and changing. I'm going to start uh, with uh, this piece, which is called Conversions. Um, conversions um, is a liquid crystal painting, which is uh, perpetually evolving perpetually changing. Uh, these are the views of the same work as it changes, and Tobias will later show a short video. Um, and uh, it's um, powered, it's connected to an artificial society model, like the ones I, I showed you earlier. But this time, this artificial society model is getting uh, real da data input from uh, aggregated um, information from Twitter feeds. So we used, uh, together with engineers at um, um, MIT, we used sentiment analysis algorithm to, to uh, parse, to analyze what people are posting on Twitter, uh, members, what the members of different protest movements of, around the globe are posting on Twitter. So obviously I'm thinking about mining of social energies, the ways in which our fears, our uh, joy and um, our um, uh, uh, disgust or anger are currently um, um, converted into value because they are, they are, they can be quantified in tweets, uh, in, in thousands of twi tweets or, or clicks. So what I realized is that the social energies actually can be converted into thermal and electrical energy, and that's what this work does. So it's this conversions is the title of the piece, and it's actually converting it and from one from one t into another. And it's obviously kind of also harvesting the collective labor of an entire society, or in this case, all the protest movements. And it perpetually evolves. So it's a, uh, also I'm interested in this relationship of paint the history of abstraction in painting, with the uh, with the abstraction uh, um, created by algorithms. Um, and that are that, that is that is used for various kinds of exploitation. So abstraction is this kind of late motive that packages exploitations of different kinds and mining of different forms. Um, this is another object in the room called uh, post fordite, and uh, this is um, um, uh, constructed by putting together pieces of fordite. Fordite is this new kind of quasi-geological formation that uh, workers of uh, now defunct and uh, bankrupt factories around the globe, but starting with Detroit, workers uh, who were um, uh, made unemployed, they started visiting these factories and found um, uh, pieces of paint that were over uh, tens or sometimes up to 100 uh, years accumulating, accumulating on the rails when the cars were being painted. So imagine cars painted in each time different color. These thin layers are accumulate on the rail tracks when they are, where they are standing. After a certain time, this paint congealed and accumulated in and fossilized into these formations. So uh, this produced this kind of quasi-geological uh, form that is called the Detroit agate or fordite. And what I did is I put a couple of pieces of this fordite, but from different factories around the world. So one is from um, China, from Bangladesh, from from Detroit, for, from from Poland, from different car factories that are produced by different uh, economic systems, and it produced this kind of n-dimensional space of impossible rock, and uh, kind of asking the question if. Fordite is the a side effect of Fordism, which is the um, uh, economy based on f factory production. Then, what is going to be the effect of post-Fordism, where there is no more, where the factory is the entire society and the products are, are invisible and immaterial, such as ideas and patents? Um, this is a, a work that uh, relates to the, the um, black void and um, experiment called Collective Lorsage Test. It's a lenticular print that perpetually changes, but impossible to photograph. And um, and this is a vitrine that presents a couple of works. I'm, I'm very briefly going to, to, to talk about uh, each object. Um, so this one is um, uh, consists in melting four artworks by four different 
famous artists, uh, Joseph Beuys, uh, Richard Prince, Carson Holler, and Carol Bove. Um, each of these works is made of a different material, so it's almost a kind of alchemic melting of these works, and they are uh, they are half melted, forming one object, a crossover between authorship, meaning, form, and they are presented with four certificates. And this notion of collective authorship is very important for my work because I'm thinking a lot about the fact that we already have collective knowledge production with Wikipedia, So, the, the, but what about collective artistic production? Like, what is going to happen? How is culture going to evolve in the future? We, can, we have to abandon somehow this uh, individual authorship, uh, and maybe we're in the middle of doing this. Uh, these are uh, sculptures based on mutated fruit flies from the laboratory of Alexander Tarakovsky, a, um, a professor at the Rockefeller University, who technically tests different science fiction scenarios. He, he mutates flies using different mutated viruses to see how in the near future, or in the far future, what kind of dis diseases could develop if the permafrost defrosts or if viruses mutate uh, on, uh, by themselves. And these are basically basically frozen in here, they are sunk in umbers. So the piece is called Future Fossil, and I'm kind of mimicking the way in which insects were frozen in umbers millions of years ago, and now they are frozen uh, in this future that may happen or not. Um, these uh, these are uh, pin pyramids made of bezoar stones called Aryan archaeology, and uh, they, they are forms that are built inside the stomachs of different animals. So each of these stones was built in the stomach of a giraffe, rhinoceros, bear, elephant, and I also purchased them. These bezoar stones are, were very important for alchemy. They were imagined to give some medicinal properties to, to be a perfect antidote for poison. So for example, the Queen Elizabeth I had a ring, and her main ring had a bezoar stone instead of a diamond in case she gets poisoned. So of course I'm thinking about this, how now now we have these aliens inside of ourselves, inside our stomachs, that are microbes. And when we think about what is the notion of self going to mean if uh, now scientists say that uh, the guarantee of our immune systems are our viruses and microbes. So they, the, the non-self, the, the, the microbial and the animal are part of self. What, what is self? like? Um, and this last work is um, using geology as a form of writing. So um, uh, I basically worked with a laboratory in Troy where they can use some kind of gigantic microwaves to, to create various explosions and, and the, the changes in, in rocks. But I realized that what, uh, um, we, when we're talking about Anthropocene and the fact that it's, uh, it's about our footprint, um, this, in this um, uh, work I used the ability to create footprints in geology, but in such a way that the footprints will look as if this event happened, but this event never happened. So we created a series of fictional, fictional events, such as nuclear uh, wars or, or extinctions of species, in order to produce this this object like to, the, that is just con consisting of different strata uh, that are the real consequences of events that never happened. Um, and these are the images of the microscope, electron microscope photography of the inside of this work. And so, you know, a lot of these works are relating also to this kind of idea of collective footprint, evolving collective footprint. I mean, definitely the um, conversions is this idea of like, what is this? evolving collective human footprint um, and how we can connect social energies to other forms of energy circulating and being always in motion. Thank you. <laughs>